my good people. <laughs> Paul the handsome one herring here and here is Flint, Michigan. Here is on Meet the Candidates and here we're going to introduce you to some folks that are running for political offices here in the city of Flint. Tonight my guest let me get this let me get this together. Tonight my guest is Brother El Alamid. How's it going, Brother El Alamid? It's going very well, Paul. How about yourself? How about yourself? You know, I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. <laughs> I'm feeling a little echo here, but I'm not sure. I'm going to try to put some headphones on, but I want to give you the opportunity to just introduce yourself. You know that question you get in the interview, the first uh, job interview, <laughs> tell me a little bit about yourself. You start Absolutely. with that, and I'm going to find some headphones. Okay, cool. Well, my name is Leon L. Alamine. That's spelled L-E-O-N. Last name is E-L hyphen A-L-A-M-I-N. And I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Flint, 44 year old, who's been raised and born mostly on Flint's north side my whole life. Grew up in a single parent household, mostly raised by my grandmother as an adolescent. And then when I got older by my mother, who um, was a GM retiree. And I'm currently um, serving as the appointed first ward city councilman. I'm also the vice president over at Flint Housing Commission. And I'm the executive director and founder of the Maid Institute my um, nonprofit organization that stands for Money, Attitude, Direction, and Education, which is a 501c3 nonprofit in the city of Flint. Okay, great, great. I think you did a good job with that. <laughs> well, as you know, uh, that I know, that I know, that you know, things are not right at City Hall. What is your take? <laughs> of what's going on and actually actually what i, I want to know i want to know what, what let, let's back up let's back up we can deal with that later let me know what what do you think or what do you know the main job of a city council person is according to the charter well it's a it's it's it's, it's a combination of things it's, it's ensuring a balanced budget it's passing and form ordinances and it's supporting our constituents with the, um, their needs and the things that they may um, need in the war and so forth as, as residents. You know, um, if you have those things in place and you have leadership that is um, moving according to lines to the charter and helping to make sure that that is um, something that's sufficient and accurate, then I believe you begin to have a well-groomed um, uh, and um, thriving, well-groomed community. Okay. Um, let me ask you this. You, you've been on council, what, maybe five, six months? Yeah, about six months now. About six months. What is the most challenging task that you've encountered <laughs> in those six months? Ah oh, man, you know, it's such, it's so personal with many of my colleagues, with other individuals. Um, and, you know, it's, it's unfortunate because it's hurting us as residents in the community. Um, prior to me being on council, um, seeing a lot of the, circ what I call a circus, be soon to read the constant back and forth, the degrading, trying to grandstand on, on, on folks and creating chaos and things never getting done. And since I've been on there, um, I have seen some areas improve, um, but we still have a ways to go. Obviously, um, especially the last few meetings, we see the type of um, behaviors by some of our colleagues um, that's being conducted, that's continuously playing into that narrative of this is the same old dysfunctional um, group of council folks. You know, I think when you have too many individuals with personal agendas, and agendas of individuals on the outside that they're trying to um, create and make the new narrative. Um, I think this is why you see a lot of the, the, the clashing and the chaos taking place. But um, there is uh, several of us who are trying to do the right thing to move the city forward. And I'm definitely as we continue to get more good um, individuals who want to do just that, help the residents move the city forward, I think we're going to see um, a great change real soon. All right, great. 
Um, now, I guess the question I want to ask is, six months and two days ago, <laughs> you decided to run for the city council seat. Why? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, Paul, I, um, you've been knowing me for some years now. I've already been in the community from um, doing this work since 2010. You know, um, let me back it up a little bit. I'm also, um, because it plays a role into why I stepped into this leadership role, I'm also a returning citizen who served seven years in the Michigan Department of Corrections from 2003 to 2010. And upon my release, I came into the community and hit the ground running as a community activist and got well aware of the, the great needs and concerns that constituents need and the city as a whole, where we were hurting and where there seems to be a lot of room of improvement, starting with the leadership. And so since 2010, I've been very involved in some kind of aspect in our community, serving it, providing uh, a slew of different services prior to my organization, whether it's just aiding our, um, our seniors and disabled, doing food drives and water giveaways, and then to speed things up, as when I created my nonprofit, I was able to enhance that work and we do a lot of work of uh, rehabilitating homes, construction, mentorship, financial education, um, getting helping individuals get good paying jobs, as well as um, holding workshops um, to do expungement fairs and child support amnesty. So when you, um, I was already involved in the community doing the work that I believe a council person should be doing and that's serving the constituents in, in some capacity or another that I kind of had mentioned. And when the untimely death of one of our um, colleagues, um, Councilman Eric Mays, passed, um, I just felt it was time for me to step up. I um, was very disappointed with some things that, were, that was continuing to take place. I really feel like our war had been forgotten. Um, if you, you look at it, um, anyone who's whoever drove through Flint's first war, which is um, on the, the north side of, uh, of the city, you can see we got, we're faced with many challenges, a lot of blight, um, a lot of crime and these type of things. And I know um, with my voice and the relationships I have built over the years, I can have a, a great impact in, in seeing some of that change and, and just really wanting to see the conditions improve, not only for me, but for our residents and for the young people that's coming up. So that's uh, your mother didn't make you do it. <laughs> no, no, sorry, no, sorry. It was just, uh, it was just all about time, and it, and it's just something in my heart, man. I, I have a, a a real love and passion for uh, people, and um, I just knew it was time for me to step up. Um, I couldn't continue to see things go down the road that I was going because we was we, we was it was a disservice to us as the residents, and I just wanted to be a strong, serious voice on the council and, and, and change the narrative a little bit and really work hard on trying to get some of the resources that the community needed over here. So let me let me ask this. Before you got the job, I'm sure you had some image of what the job would be. What was the thing that you thought the job would be that it ended up not being? Oh, man, that's a good question. You know, I thought um, if you come to council, you present a good resolution, a good idea that can really benefit the ward or the community as a whole, that you would get um, some of the stuff that, that you know, some, some things are no-brainers and you would think people would support it. And the thing that I had to come to realize is that even if it's a great idea that will help your constituents in your war or the city as a whole, you have individuals whose whole aim is to disrupt it and try to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I think that's been one of the most challenging things since I've been on council is uh, even when I come with great ideas or um, things that I think can benefit the war, you constantly, you know, I've been interrogated. It seems like I'm being interrogated or something, like I'm doing something wrong. And, and that's been the disheartening part about it by certain individuals. From the time I was appointed to the, even doing the interview process, you know, being stereotyped and, um, and so forth. Okay. Yes, sir. So I watched the Haskell folks or Hasselbring folks come into the city council and then I saw the compromise 
that you offered using some of your ward funds to offset the, the, the concerns they had. And they were still angry at that. Can you explain that to me? I, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. Again, um, that one really caught me off guard, too, because, you know, um, behind the scenes, I have been working with the representatives on both sides, as well as with the city. And um, when I first came on to council, they were already in negotiations and it was a stalemate. Things had broke down. I mean, it was attorneys brought in and it was looking real bad. And then once I, I was able, when I was appointed, I hit the ground running, just trying to do my research here, both sides. So I can, um, you know, try to try to help negotiate something that would be fair. Um, fast forward, we got to a point to where the attorney was removed. Um, and we got the folks back to the table from the Hasselbring side, as well as from the city side, just to have a, a regular conversation to where we negotiated a lease that it was originally being proposed at $2,000 a month. And I was able to help negotiate and get that down to 500. And then some other things in that, that lease that was, um, you know, to try to make it fair. Um, we got to the point to where the uh, president of Hasselbring even signed the lease. And I'm thinking everything was good and we're going to just present it at council and, 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 you know, we move forward. Unfortunately, um, individuals, you know, from the, again, certain council members, um, wanted to make, uh, this a political political size it and thought that the deal wasn't good enough and that, um, basically it should be like a dollar, like back in the day, you got to understand. The center hasn't had a, a standing lease since 2016. And so that was disheartening to hear and come into the knowledge of seeing that the center hasn't even had a standing lease since 2016. And to get to this point to where we finally negotiated uh, uh, a lease that was pretty fair. And then to get the uproar, especially by four council members, the same ones who's always been attacking me since I've been on there you know, um, figure out a way to politicize it. And then fast forward a little bit to the current day, you know, now I know why they wanted to politicize it because um, the person that they want to see in this seat, you know, is, is, is a colleague of theirs and they want to change the narrative. And so, you know, when you don't have anything on your resume that can match up to mine because of the work I've been doing this where I didn't just come um, Johnny on the spot want to be in this position. I've been doing this work throughout the years since I've been home. And and that's the difference between me and, and those who are challenging me and even most of the people on that council. Their resume can't touch mine. And so now having an understanding why they wanted to politicize this, um, it, it make, made a lot more sense. And so, you know, I rolled up my sleeves, went back to the table, and then even was willing to incentivize the situation so we can try to move forward and um, re um, reallocated some funds or, or willing to reallocate funds out of my council um, budget to um, support the first year. And so if we move forward with the current lease as it stands, they won't even have to pay a lease, um, their lease for a whole year. And then I've been working with uh, community leaders in the community who also want to support and is willing to pay the second year. And so now as it currently stands, I have it negotiated um, to where they won't even be paying the, the lease for the next two years. So if we get this lease agreement signed and, and done for the first two years, they won't even have to pay rent. And I think that's huge and it's disheartening. You've got people that want to politicize this because they don't have anything on their resume that can touch mine or come at me with or that the residents can see besides just, you know, the misinformation that they're putting out there. So did, did, did they have a, um, uh, a solution that wasn't voted on or did they, it was a dollar or nothing? That's what the four that's always been coming at me since I've been on council want to see happen. Um, unfortunately, you know, I can't make that decision. That has to be negotiated by the mayor and the, um, the executive director and her her board of directors at Hasselbring. All I can do is try to negotiate um, what's going to be fair and, and and move it from there. But ultimately, the mayor makes the final decision. If you know if they want me to advocate for a dollar, then sure. 
but that still it, I can't make the, the final decision that has to come through the mayor. And that was expressed several times at a council meeting and individuals still wanted to try to politicize it to give um, a candidate something to try to run on and, and come at me and make it seem like I'm not here to support our seniors, which is unfortunate. So now you're out in the community. <clears throat> Um, yes, what are the people saying in the first war one about the dysfunction at council and their needs? Well, first to that first, your first question, um, they're tired of it. You know, we have been watching this circus for over a decade that's been taking place at our city council and nothing ever really gets done that benefits the, um, the constituents and the residents and the war on a greater scale or level. Um, you know, individuals, personal friends and, and small circles may benefit from the chaos and the division, but the, the ward as an overall whole has not benefited from these tactics and this kind of behavior, this circ what I call a circus. Um, so definitely they're, they're tired of that. And um, I would say, Two of the things or the main concerns I've been hearing from residents is um, blight elimination, um, home renovation or new homes to replace once the blighted homes are, are being torn down, um, economic development. No, you know, we haven't had no real serious economic development on Flint's North Side in over 20 years, you know, that um, residents can see and, and benefit from and thrive from and um, public safety, you know, making sure we're taking care of our seniors, our disabled, and providing, um, also providing um, services for our young people. You know, our young people tend to not have much to do, and that has to change, but that also, that's where it goes back to economic development, you know, bringing in things and centers and, and community um, places and spaces that individuals can take their children to congregate, to, to learn, to to um, experience and, and, and exercise um, themselves in a safe way. Um, things like that is what I've been hearing a lot of. The North End Food Market. Is that in the first ward? Yes, sir. What's going on with that? I mean, that's economic development for the North End. Yeah, absolutely. I'm um, super excited about ultimately when, that, when, when it, the grocery store opens up. Um, I thought it would be open by now, but um, we, we come to learn that the, um, you know, the investors need about 1.5 million more dollars to see the building um, before the building can actually open. So right now, you know, um, to my knowledge and what I'm hearing on the ground and having conversations with those who's leading that, um, the goal is to continue fundraising to pull in that 1.5 so the, the grocery store can optimally open. Okay, so so maybe helpful before the first of the year. I'm I'm sorry, you broke up. I said maybe before the first of the year. You say? Um, I'm not sure. You know, I'm I'm, I'm kind of not the one driving that. As far as the um the the point of contact person who's who, who's over like fundraising and things like that. I will hope that would be cool to uh, bring in the new year with the grocery store open. It would be a real win for um, the residents in the first ward and the city as a whole. Is there anything else you got going on in the first ward that people need to know about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm grinding every day, man. I've been rolling up my sleeves, as you know. Um, I'm always involved in something, whether it's expungement fairs and helping um, returning citizens who are coming out of prison and jail, help them getting jobs or getting their records expunged. You know, Flint has a uh, 42 percent of this population has felony convictions have our population so that's something that's very near and dear to me so i'm always involved on the reentry side of things i'm also um as a council person and god willing uh, with the support of residents i'll be in this position to f finish the term out and one of the things i definitely will be driving is an ordinance that um, i put together a fair housing ordinance in partnership with uh, other advocates to um, pass a fair housing ordinance that will allow returning citizens to have a real opportunity at getting in housing and public housing and things like that without being um, discriminated against. And that's gonna be, um, that's a huge topic. I've been seeing some of that pass in some cities. 
prior to Flint. And um, I'm really hoping that I can get the support to get it passed here because that's going to be a game changer. As I mentioned earlier, 42% of your population has a felony conviction and some, that's something very near and dear that needs to be addressed. Um, I just finished um, uh, 15, renovating 15 homes in the first ward and we're working on one currently on the north side. It's not in the first ward, it's actually in the fifth ward where um, it's a lot of disinvestment in blighted homes. And um, we have a home over there we're currently working on. I got a crew out there, part of my organization. Um, I'm, I'm continuing to do things like serve our seniors, uh, providing cases of water, healthy food out of our urban um, farm. We have an urban hoop house and garden. Each year we grow fresh fruits and vegetables that we provide to the residents in the community, in particular our, our seniors and disabled. Um, continuing to every day with my team, help individuals get jobs, whether you 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 coming from prison or jail or you, you already been out here and just looking for a new opportunity. This is something I do on a daily basis. I'm also engaged with our young people, making sure just that being a good mentor to them and trying to steer them down a path, um, a good path so they don't go down the road that I myself and others who uh, without that guidance, a good mentorship or positive in, um, individuals in our lives tend to go down and make some bad choices where they can end up in, in a bad place and space. So I'm very involved, man, and I'm out here just canvassing every day. Just trying to um, let the people know I'm here. I will continue to do this this work that I've been doing, and I got some great ideas and plans moving forward that I think is going to really benefit our ward and the city as a whole. Um, having good conversations with law enforcement, looking at some new initiatives that I would love to see get done on community policing, um, and so things like that. Um, I'm, I'm I'm working, man. This is why I be be a little tired sometimes and you guys see me because I'm I'm really out here in the field putting in that work. Listen, I'm not listen, I'm not mad at you. Uh, I've seen you <laughs> out on the on the roads. I've seen you doing what you do. I want to give you the last <laughs> couple of minutes to just look at the camera and convince people to vote for you. Well, Actually, I want to say I got to step back because your image is frozen. So you don't have to look at the camera. Your image is frozen on the screen. So you can you can rub your eyes, scratch your nose, but I need you to to encourage the people to vote for it. I just want to um, ask the residents of the first ward to continue to support me and my campaign, my leadership. I'm thankful to even be here and, and thankful for you entrusting me in the primary. And I just need your support to get us through this finish line because there's some great things happening in the first ward, as many of you have had an opportunity to see. Those who have reached out and talked to me, and those of, when I'm knocking on doors and we have conversations, there's a lot of great things taking place from getting speed humps put in areas where they've been speeding with these cars. We have been able to achieve that, um, renovating more homes, getting more blight tore down, blighted homes and structures and things like that. We're starting to hit the commercial um, blighted structures as well. So I'm, I'm calling on you to please um, give me your support. Absentee ballots are already out. Early voting has started. And November 5th, I just want to call on the residents to support me. I'm passionate about this work that I do. Um, I'm committed, um, transparency, honest, and I'm, I just want to roll up my sleeves and continue to do this hard work. And, and I'm asking for your support, Leon and Alameen, for the first war city council position. All right, man. Hey, it was a pleasure having you on uh, the show. I think you've made some good points. Uh, I hope those that are watching uh click in we're not going to tell you who to vote for but we're going to encourage you to get out and vote uh, election is november 5th uh you got to earn your right to gripe all right flint votes <laughs> peace absolutely peace I'ma help them.
Tell them, please. Tell them, please. I'm, tell them. I'm trying to get public access back together. But I've decided to do a GoFundMe project. Yeah, yeah. So that I can hire people uh, to do community events and so that I can uh, buy equipment and make that channel what it needs to be. So if you miss a government meeting, you can go to Fact and see it. If you miss a school play, you can go to Fact and see it. If somebody's doing a music video in their basement, you can go to Fact and see it. Two bucks a person. Oh, wouldn't that be fabulous? I'd be great. Two bucks. Um, that's not even your Hulu subscription or your Netflix subscription or your, uh, well, it's about a cup of coffee, isn't it? This is Starbucks a month. It depends on where you're getting your coffee. All right. It's half a Starbucks. <laughs> it's 810-239-2901. Of course, you can check us out online, Spectacle Production, Spectacle TV on YouTube. Why not? We're on Are you over the age of 25 and you haven't graduated from high school? Are you over the age of 30 and you're having problems with basic reading and math calculations? And you need to return to school but you're afraid of the traditional classroom setting? Are you over the age of 50 and you're having problems finding a job because you don't know how to use a computer? Well, don't worry, T Adult Skills Center is here for you. We work with adults aged 25 years of age and older in basic reading, math, GD prep, and computer training. So please, give us a call today because Chia is here to help you.